This is the Franchise Basketball Insider, presented by Massengale Eye Care, Oklahoma City's leading eye care provider since 1989. Call 631 2020. Greetings, basketball fans. Oklahoma City got in a quick morning workout today prior to catching the charter jet heading to Salt Lake City for the final preseason game against the Utah Jazz tomorrow night. On today's Basketball Insider, we visit with Billy Donovan and Thunder Center Stephen Adams. Russell took a little bit of a spill last night. He got back up, kept playing, and he got mid. I mean, are you going to be holding any guys out for the next game? I think we're going to right now. We're going to evaluate tomorrow. We got a couple guys with just like I think some bumps and bruises, and it's probably something right now where check with the medical staff probably tomorrow morning at shoot around just to see where we're at physically. Um, but right now, um, you know, would like to go into this, this game against Utah kind of with a similar mindset as we did against Denver. Um, but some of that could be altered just based on if the, you know, the trainer and medical staff say, listen, it would be, he can play, but it may be a good decision to rest him. Those are the kind of decisions we'll probably have to make tomorrow. So Mitch didn't practice today? No, Mitch is not going to make the trip. He's not going to play. He's definitely, I'm sorry, he's definitely out. Yeah, he, uh, he's uh, got to continue to go through those baseline testing mm -hmm. to see where he's at. So, uh, uh, you know, coming out of this game against Utah, uh, we'll have a better feel of where he's at. You know, he's getting better, but it's just hard with these concussions. You just want to be, you know, really, really safe and careful and making sure he's back to where he needs to be on all his baseline tests. You talked about <clears throat> having big men that can be transporters of the ball. You talked a little bit about you know, facilitating in today's NBA four men like Draymond Green, Blake Griffin, mm -hmm. Boris Diaw. Do you see Mitch being that type of guy that could kind of bridge that gap? I maybe? think I think he can do that. You know, I think that's what happens. You know, everybody th everybody thinks the small ball is because of shooting, and there is an element to it. But what happens is is when Steph Curry gets two guys on him, and he throws the ball, you know, to the elbow area you know, to Draymond Green. He's putting the ball on the floor and creating offense. He's getting it to the next side of the floor. He's attacking the basket. And he's getting guys shots because when there's two players on one guy, it means it's, you know, four on three. And having that kind of facilitator that can make a play. Like I get, you know, the stretch four men in the NBA and guys that can really shoot and that's certainly a weapon. But what's even more of a weapon to me is is when you have four men that can handle and pass. Because then it really creates a problem because now you have you're getting guys that can put the ball on the floor to the paint, and once you're going inside to try to protect the basket, now you're starting to leave three-point shooters open, and, and you're starting to get guys taking rhythm shots. It makes it a lot easier. So I've I've always believed, you know, the way you know, even when I was at Florida, having Noah and Horford and David Lee, and the, even a Mike Miller played some power forward spot, Chandler Parsons. Those guys were always good at not only good offensive players, but they were really, really good passers and they could make plays, you know, in, in broken floor situations. Is that a skill you can really develop? I know Serge worked this summer a lot on trying to work on passing, or is it kind of something that you just kind of... Well, I, th I think it's a skill you can definitely work on, and I think if you move the floor in such a way that they know, okay, when I get, get it, this is what the floor is going to look like on the backside, mm -hmm. and I know where my outlets are, I think you can help them, um, you know, to... to, to uh, to help them when they do catch the basketball, that you know they locate and they make decisions. But I think our bigs can definitely, without question, you know, any pocket passes or those reversal passes, they can get the ball transported, you know, from one one side of the floor to, to the other. Um, and you know, I think that that can lead to at least moving the defense. For guys that are used to having the ball in their hands as much as Kevin and Russell are, how impressed are you with the way that they move off the ball once the bigs get the ball? Yeah, no, I think it's been great. You know, like listen. When, when, when those guys are attacking, they're going to bring two people, you know, to those guys. They just are. And I think that, you know, trying to create offensively opportunities where they have outlets, where it's not like, okay, I'm going right now, and now I've got to really, you know, take a difficult or a challenge shot over two people. Now, I think Kevin clearly is one of the best shot makers in, in, in the game, and, and he can do it in a variety of different ways because of his length and his high release. And, you know, Russell's one of those guys athletically when he's attacking the basket, he can take on two people. That, that's, that's fine. You know, sometimes they get fouled when they do that. But you also want to create avenues for outlets, you know, where if they do come, they don't like what they have, they can throw it to a big, and the big can get it to the next side of the floor, can get it to, the, get it to you know, to another player. You're getting better with the basketball? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, just getting comfortable with the position. Uh, in the system, because you know, it's more that um, playing the pocket and being able to transfer the ball over. And so I guess I'm just getting used to that um, a little bit more, but it's a long way to go, mate. Yeah. Is that something that, that you look forward to doing, being a facilitator in the offense when you can get the ball and make a good pass? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, all bigs want to touch the ball here and there. So, yeah, it's fun. Uh, 
KD said the other day that he's never met anyone else from New Zealand, so he assumes that everyone there is just like you. That's a, that's a bad thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> New Zealanders are a lot better than me, mate. <laughs> Not nicer and all that. So, yeah. Do you feel like that your personality sort of supersedes you now? I mean, because you're sort of larger than life with the hair and the tattoos and the mustache and things like that. Do you think people expect personality and then basketball? or? I don't know what they expect, honestly. Um, I just kind of just figuring myself out, I guess, mate. Yes. Have you figured yourself more out from last year to this year? Have you feel like you've grown some? Uh, yes, I, I mean, I've definitely matured in, um, uh, like on the court as well as off the court, just being more, I guess, aware of a lot of things around that's going on. Um, uh, Appearance-wise, I'm just, I'm just messing around, bro. This is honestly all this is is just me being lazy. I can't. I can't be stuff paying for people to cut my hair anymore. <laughs> it's tough, so yeah, letting it go. There seems to be, a, I don't know what the word would be, a steadiness to your game, a consistency to your game. Uh, you know, just watching over the course of the preseason. Are you, are, are you feeling that? I mean, you know, how, how would you describe how you're playing right now? Uh, I don't know. Playing. I don't. I mean, I'm not it up to the standard I want to be. Um, but it's just cliche. All, all players will say that. Um, but yeah, I guess um, the steadiness. I think it just comes back to like just feeling comfortable with the system, just getting along with it, and trying to really, uh, yeah, get really comfortable with that position first. So I think that might be the steadiness that you're seeing. Um, if you're talking about stats, then no, that'll be all over the place. But in terms of just getting like certain jobs done, yeah, that's what what we're really trying to do is just those habits, just make sure that they're really solidified. Yeah. Seems like. Russell in the pick and roll when you're kind of diving to the room, he hits you with passes in like a million different ways. Is that a thing that you have to practice almost to like catch the ball at your ankle sometimes, catch the ball uh, high, you know, just all yeah, the different um, variety of passes that you can receive? Yeah, because like for the most, they're, they're good passes. It's it's just that he's so unpredictable, you know what I mean? Because he's moving so fast, then you're, I don't know. Yeah, but like uh, we do, we do have drills. Yeah. If that's what we mean by yeah, yeah. catching like these bullet passes from like me to you, like yeah. yeah. So you got those, but yeah, it's still no excuse. You still gotta uh, just uh, the the preparation just needs to be quick, and uh, you just have to be yeah have whole collision. And that's Thunder Center Stephen Adams, who got poked in the eye last night. Doesn't seem to be a problem. He was back at practice today and should be in the lineup tomorrow night against the Utah Jazz. We'll have another basketball insider when the Thunder return home, and of course, all counting down to the season opener a week from Thursday against the San Antonio Spurs. Thanks for watching this edition of the Franchise Basketball Insider. From the Integris Development Center, I'm David Garrett on 1077 The Franchise.